Awesome. Sweet. Okay, that's not bad. That orange belly really was a highlight. Right? <laughs> Look at that bad boy. Huh? Kind of want to hit it a little more. Should I give a little run through if some people are on the YouTube here? That sounds great. If anybody's out there, watch on the YouTube. I'm Garrison Doctor. Thread your water. I'm drawing a uh, Rio Grande Cutthroat Trout here live for Colorado Trout Unlimited. Um, my wife Corinne is here as well with me in the studio. Um, I'm in my my downstairs studio here. The light is a little bit tough for for filming, so bear with us. Mm -hmm. Washes out the artwork just a little bit, but I think you guys will still be able to see uh, the piece that's coming to life here. Um, I think I mentioned I'm working in pastel. So both pastel pencils and uh, like full stick pastels. Uh, thus the gloves just makes for easy cleanup because I'm rubbing it around constantly. Um, so this is gonna be an auction item in the upcoming Colorado Trout Unlimited Gala auction next week. Um, so yeah, it will be a framed one of a kind original. Um, some beautiful native trout vibes. So I'm just kind of working left to right, filling in towards the head here, obviously, um, where this guy's gonna come to life over the next next little bit. And if you have any questions, um, there's a way to throw some questions in a chat, I believe, and uh, they'll get over to us. So fire them in there. Yeah, thanks, Garrison. So we're excited to have Garrison and Corinne with us this evening. Um, for those that are joining via YouTube, um, They've been great partners for CTU for many years. Um, and as I mentioned a bit earlier, they were our, we were their first charity partners um, when they first got going. And we have benefited from that relationship for many years. Um, we're fortunate to also have Corinne on our board as a director at large. And we think together, we believe it's been about five years, which is awesome. Um, and so we have a great partnership with these guys. And they um, came to us with the idea to do um, a one-of-a-kind piece for the gala um, and then put together this sort of virtual event um, in this virtual year. Uh, so it's a cool way for us to kind of see the piece come to completion and then we'll get to auction it off. So absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, because of the wonders of YouTube, people can pop in and kind of go back and forth and, and watch different parts come to life. Um, we've been laughing at Garrison for years now that he always has the trout facing uh the other way of what we have here so it's always like facing left i much prefer <laughs> since i have to work left to right to do the head first and then i know like the head looks good and then i work to the tail so you guys have really challenged me here because i wanted to have the eye and you know what really brings the fish to life be what was coming last for people <laughs> to see. So I had to switch and draw the fish facing I, to the right. I think because of Zoom, it looks like it's facing the That's other way. <laughs> true. Well, it looks like I'm left-handed, I'm not. Yeah. 
<laughs> we don't have a lefty here. Um, but yeah, we're excited. We uh, obviously we missed go getting to go to like the fly fishing show this year and see um, all of our friends and customers and partners at that actual live event. And usually there Garrison will do a piece and kind of pop in and out and people will get to watch him do it. And it always gets people excited. And so we thought, why not put that on YouTube and auction off the piece for Colorado to you? We always try to put together a little something fun for the gala. And this just felt like something a little more unique an yeah. original piece. It will be framed. Um, so what you see here is obviously just the piece, but we're gonna get it done um, <clears throat> excuse me, in a really beautiful frame with a mat and, and all that. We work with the same person. So they know, they know our look. Yeah. It'll be a real <laughs> nice double mat. We'll get a, we'll get a sweet frame on it. Good. For sure. Yeah. We're excited to see the piece come to completion and then put it in the auction and uh, it'll be awesome. I'm going to put the link live for us. Great. Fire it up. <laughs> so no spots on the pectoral fin on this guy. Just a few spots, but we're going to start to get back into these real grands, get a few more spots towards the head again. Um, so we'll be getting a few more spots coming in on his, his cheek plate. Happy spots. <laughs> so I like to work on this toned paper. You guys can see it's not a nice kind of like mid-tone gray and it really allows the, the pastels to be a little bit more luminous, I think, in terms of their color. And it allows the the whites, you know, the lights to pop off of the paper and then the darks obviously being darker, it creates, I think, a lot more three-dimensionality um, than just drawing a fish on a, on a clean white piece of paper, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. What was the stuff you said you use at the end? You were saying, you know, you have to go left to right on a, on a pastel to, so it doesn't smear, but then you put something on it. Is that yeah. just to preserve it over time or? Um, yeah, the, the pastels are actually very archival once they're laid down. The problem is before it gets framed and projected and even for that process, you want it to have some fixative. So that's what that is. It's like a spray workable fixative. It doesn't change the piece at all. It just um, kind of fixes all those little pastel um, pigments onto the page a little bit better so that it doesn't get damaged before it gets framed and hung on the wall. That's cool. What do you think the most difficult part is? Um, I think the eye is what really brings the fish to life and, and fish eyes are kind of weird. So I think I, I spend a lot of time on the eye as you guys will see, but that I think really is what brings, um, life into the fish. So I think it's, it's one of the more challenging parts, but it also is like really rewarding because it is the piece that really makes it kind of look like it's staring at you off the paper. That's cool. So you can see, I kind of go back and forth from the the stick pastels here, like the big traditional pastels to the pastel pencils, but they'll all blend seamlessly together because they're all, 
you know, pastel based. So I can kind of switch back and forth on those easily. And for anyone that's um, just joining, feel free to pop a question for Garrison or Corinne or any of us at CTU um, into the chat. Um, and we're happy to have some conversation with you guys that way. Absolutely, don't be shy. We'd love to know you're there. <laughs> Well, you did. You can oh, just Annie, keep going. Oh. I can talk yeah. and work. I'm good with that. So, you know, you just keep firing whenever you got one over there. This is our chance. We have him like just sitting there. We should ask him all sorts of questions. That's right. <laughs> so, you might see me get out this eraser. This is a, I call it a kneaded eraser, but it's like a kind of specialized. I use these for everything, but they'll kind of dab pigment back up off the paper. So if I have anything that's kind of fallen off because my drawing board is at an angle, um, kind of need to clean it up just every once in a while, make sure I'm keeping everything nice and clean. Or if I have a little bit of pastel overlap, it won't like, if you draw a pastel mark and then try to erase it with one of these, it wouldn't get rid of it, but it will kind of back just lighter stuff off of the paper, if that makes sense. So I'm going to come in with some pretty strong lights here to give this guy a nice, like wet, shiny, reflective trout look. You'll see me pick this up. This is just a smudge stick. So it's not putting any pigment down. It's just moving together what I ever already have laid down blending it all kind of in a little bit. And now is when you can tell people why you're wearing gloves again. Related yeah. to smudging. Smud and that's why I'm wearing <laughs> the gloves too, because I'm always dabbing this stuff around my fingers and the gloves make for a very nice, easy cleanup, as you can imagine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. It's also because I have to be working left to right and top to bottom. In other words, like I can always access this part of him without smudging anything. But if I'm working up here and this is already drawn, then I'm going to smear it. So it's always that kind of, um, you know, keeping that progression going left to right and top to bottom so I don't get myself into trouble and start smearing stuff too much, you know? Nice and bright, you got it. You got it. Oh, man. it's so, I think the, the tactile piece of it is so therapeutic. Just, it's kind of meditative. So this is the color that I'm using for this guy's par marks. It's kind of a nice like bluish, grayish green. Early on in the, uh, in the, whatever you call it, quarantine or, you know, lockdown, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Garrison made some black and white coloring sheets for exactly that reason. Cause it was like, we, we did a couple live streams of, you know, Garrison doing some pieces and people were like, I want to color along. And so we did like basically 
coloring book pages and they're still on our blog. So you could go and do there your you own go. fish get the, drawing. Get the colored pencils out. <laughs> Start scrapping a little. Exactly. That's, it. That's all you need. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Exactly. And some of this detail work that I'm doing just due to the lighting and the computer camera is going to be a little bit lost, unfortunately, until you guys see a larger picture. But um, the overall product will start to come through. So before I start in on his cheek plate area here and we get to the real meat of the issue, I'm going to come back in and start kind of filtering some spots back in on this guy a little bit. The ones that we caught last year had quite a few spots also up here towards the front, even though they're not much in the middle, just a little bit. When I'm waving my hand, I'm just blowing pastel dust away and down the pastel it's pencils. It's not like a mosquito. It's hat. not a mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> Pastels always leave a little bit of kind of dust residue when you scrape them around. So you're always kind of clearing that off as you work. Um, the nice thing about these pastels is they're so opaque. They really do allow you to come in and layer like this where I can have a base color down and then really come back over top um, and punch the spots, for example. Well, that's starting to look like a trout. We're getting there, We're getting there. Like he needs just a couple more back here just to gradiate that pattern forward a little. So this will be kind of hard to see um, on your screen, but I'm coming in with real light and I'm, I'm doing actual just trout scale reflection pattern here. And this will come through on the photo and just give like a really beautiful kind of, you know, if you look very closely at those scales on a trout back, they're very reflective metallic you know they're just really small so i just want to kind of give an homage to that texture and that metallic pattern of those little scales working around the spots the good news is on youtube it flips it properly so we know that you are not left handed Oh, nice. Good work, YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> nice <Don't> work. Really. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you guys can see that eh, just a little bit, but that's that scale texture um, filling in around those spots. That's kind of a dance between realism and you know, definitely an artistic interpretation, of course. where we have found these guys, these real grand cutthroat trout that I'm, I'm drawing here, where we've caught them way up high. They seem to love dry flies, as I think most cutties do. <laughs> we can all agree. That delicate little cutty dry fly Oh, take. yeah. 
They love that. All right, so now I'm going to really start to think about popping that metallic cheek plate. Really punch some yellow and orange. This is where this is probably the most prominent, brightest color I think on these fish is, is on the cheek plate. So I really want to amp that. And this is actually a very light gray because I want to save the whitest whites for really the, the top highlights, the, the highlights in his eye, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm going to kind of lay this all down a little bit rough and then smudge it all together and then come back in on top. Pastel, depending on the color and how thick you put it on, will eventually clog the pores of the paper so that the paper texture can't really grab any more color. Um, so you want to make sure that you're getting this red is a problem like that for me. Getting that color on there when you need it. If any of you guys just kind of popped on or are tuning in, I'm Garrison Doctor. Apologize if you already heard this, but just in case. Garrison Doctor, I'm drawing a Rio Grande Cuddy here with pastel, both uh, pastel pencils and classic uh, stick pastels. So I'm just kind of popping the cheek, those nice potent cheek plate colors on this guy. Picture this fish being like early summer, post-spawn, but still with some pretty strong colors happening. You can kind of so in real life, those cheek plates are very brilliantly colored. On your screen, they get um, washed out a little bit, but I'm going to give you guys just kind of a, a closer look at the whole thing here. Um, and you can kind of see I'm filling out to that eye, working up to it. And uh, you can see how the lights on the top of that cheek plate are really kind of filling in that metallic underneath the eye. And then we're going to pop even 
some black spots on on top of that, which will give us that really nice kind of contrast on this guy. So I'm gonna give him just a couple, they almost get like a Parmar kind of spot on their cheek plate sometimes. This will be sort of like the under spots. This is just a little smudge stick, kind of work that pastel in how I want it. And not a ton of spot here, but do want a few. They'll be nice and bold. Yeah, that's starting to get that cutty look. We're obviously the tour de force here at the very end will be that that strong cutthroat slash right on the bottom of his jaw to really give him that true true cutthroat love. It's amazing how that cutthroat part is like, oh, yep, and there it is. And there it is, yeah. <laughs> For sure. And Shannon, I don't know if you know, but I think there's a couple of Rio Grande Cutthroat specific CTU projects mm -hmm. kind of going on right now, are there not? Yeah. So we did um, a crowdfunding campaign last summer, which I think you and I talked about when we were trying to figure out which one maybe would make sense yeah. to, to highlight. Um, and that is the Sand Creek Project. And that is a project basically... Um, above the sand dunes in the San de Cristo um, yeah, nice. wilderness. So super awesome area. Um, actually just not that far, about an hour and a half uh, from me. And I live in Salida. So pretty cool project, um, really fairly remote, um, but the sort of the perfect, um, you know, several fa factors came together to kind of decide on that one. Um, the lake is actually um, super, super cold, um, too cold, in fact, um, which is great in a, in a changing climate to have a lake with that kind of cold water. Um, and so right. the water that comes out of the lake is actually a perfect temperature, which then means that um, these native cutthroats um, will be able to withstand um, some of the changing temperatures for a longer period. Um, because of that cold water and stuff. So yeah, so the first phase, it's been many years of uh, trying to get in there and work on the project first, you know, just all the research to decide it's a suitable place. Um, right. And then they got, so let's see, 2020 was phase one um, of the actual on the ground project. They had intended to maybe start some of that in 2019 and then snow came early. Um, and mm. because it's so high um, and pretty inaccessible, they had to kind of push that a little bit. So this last um, late summer, early fall, they actually went in. So TU, um, Kevin Terry is our project coordinator down there, um, obviously in partnership with CPW, the Park Service and others, um, and went in and um, did the first phase of that project. And then um, they're hoping obviously to do phase two this summer and stuff. So still a few steps from actually putting the Rio Grande cutthroat um, into those holdings um, because you have to make sure that they're ready for them. Sure. Um, but yeah, a super, super cool project. So, and ideally, um, if all the factors turn out to be as good as we think they are, that it'll be a stronghold for Rio Grande Cutthroat. So um, awesome. in a really pristine watershed too. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's great. And I know there's a few good strongholds in New Mexico, but it doesn't seem like there's as many in Colorado. So that could be really important. Yeah, we're kind of... Um, you know, sort of as far north, I guess, which is crazy to think we can say Colorado, but um, it's definitely, they, they're sort of more in New Mexico than in Colorado. So this, right. this area is pretty specific for them. Yeah. Right. The chat, the, so one of the chapters, there's only four chapters in um, New Mexico. And um, when things got shut down last spring, 
we helped their um, Santa Fe area, which is called the Truchas chapter to do their annual fundraiser online, sort of like we're currently doing. Oh, cool. Um, to raise money for some of their Rio Grande cutthroat projects in Northern New Mexico. So some overlap there um, with that chapter because New Mexico's, you know, um, low enough in population and, and stuff that they only have four chapters. So the Santa Fe chapter happens to cover a big area. Sure. Um, but that's a bunch of what the, the fundraising that they do goes towards. So, so yeah, some pretty cool stuff um, in Northern yeah. New Mexico for sure. Well, if I'm being a hundred percent honest, that's where we've caught most of ours is New Mexico. For sure. Yeah. Well, and that, um, so many you know, opportunities space. down there in, in Northern New Mexico, you know, yeah. That Vermejo area and stuff has so much space um, to yeah. catch, you know. So yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and I know that um, you just finished not too long ago a, a San Juan lineage, right? That um, was for yeah. our Five Rivers chapter in Durango. Correct. So you've done a couple I, of those Southern um, native fish. Right, and I think that's going to be part of. Um, a fundraiser similar to this that they'll be doing. So if anybody out there is a big San Juan lineage enthusiast. <laughs> yeah. You know, Who isn't yeah. when you find one that, that you think thing. isn't even, even around anymore, you've got to kind of be a, wow, that's a, that's a story worth telling, right? Exactly. It's such a cool story. So that, um, I don't know if you saw Shannon, but the photo that I posted on rep your water and on my personal Instagram feed mm -hmm. at Garrison doctor today, that's the San Juan lineage that I did. Oh, nice. Okay. Nice. That, so yeah. You can kind of see that one. That's, uh, that's where that one ended up. Nice. And there was a, and you created a hat with it too, right? Am I right? On I did not. They did the hat with, um, another great artist, actually CP oh. Underwood out of Montana. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know the name. Um, uh, I thought there was overlap there, but yours is the piece that they're using in the auction. Yeah, just it's more just the fine art pieces from mm -hmm. what I understand. They might do, um, I don't know if they're going to do some apparel with it or not. I think that's mm -hmm. sort of up in the air at this point. Nice. Okay. Casey oh, that's Underwood. Cool. CP Underwood is, I believe, his Instagram handle. The digital age we live in. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just kind of working forward here on this guy, working towards his eye. I'm going to give you guys another just kind of peek. You can see, obviously, he looks dead oh, nice. right now without the eye. <laughs> but uh, that's going to it's gonna come to life. And you can see those highlights on the top, you know, especially with that um, nice toned paper, give that really kind of wet, um, wet look. That's cool him so have you ever done that added water to one of these since you said yeah you know, kind of look more at the... like uh you know rising fish with the mm -hmm. dappled light you know water coming through even like sea mountains beyond sort of deal um mm -hmm. i like that as well i do really enjoy just the pure like this is the fish that's all I'm trying to say, right? Mm -hmm. Just the colors, the, the patterning, there's so much happening in any given, especially native trout species. Um, I do love just kind of getting lost in that, in that piece and just keeping it pretty simple, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this guy life size would be a pretty nice, <laughs> he's yeah. gotta be 14 or 15 inches at least. He'd, yeah. be a pretty, he'd be a pretty good one as far as these, these little beautiful fish go. Yeah. Yeah. That's good size for a native for sure. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's some lakes where these guys get pretty big, but it doesn't Bigger. seem like as many. Yeah. Well, they live in a um, dry place <laughs> for the most right, part, right? Exactly. So not, not big, not a lot of big water, or at least if it's big water, it gets pretty small, you know, towards the end right. of the season and stuff. So you got to be able to sustain in smaller pools and stuff. Totally. So I'm going to start working on this guy's eye a little bit. I'm going to go light to dark. 
I want like a really bright, that might be too much. Yeah. Sometimes these <clears throat> stick pastels are a little bit tough for detail work. So pardon my hat here. I'm gonna have to kind of get in on this guy a little bit. So I'm gonna start kind of filling in the really light parts of the pupil. Or not the pupil, the iris, excuse me. And then I'm gonna add the pupil in last. And I want a nice, strong highlight on this eye with actual, it's one of the few places where I wanna use like legit white light. That's cool. Sometimes I like to come in with just a little bit of like sky blue as part of that highlight. So with your love of fish, Garrison, have you ever um, dissected one on the biology side and really kind of like looked really close at the eye like that, those kind of things? No, I haven't really done that from, a, I mean, obviously I've caught a ton of them and taken a ton of photos. So that helps. And I have eaten more than a few. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Not real grand cutties. No, no, no let's, but, yeah. <laughs> right. Clear there, but trout, uh, especially invasive brook trout. Yeah. Um, here in Colorado, but, uh, no, I haven't. That would be a very interesting practice. Yeah. I just wondered. Right. Speaking of eating trout, Aaron and Grace went to, uh, oh, I just based it clear Creek reservoir, you know, sort of North of BV and did some ice fishing. So we had uh -huh. some smoked, just a couple, it was a slow day, but we had some smoked trout. So, and definitely not Rio Grande. Trout, there you so. go. Good. Yeah, <laughs> not, not the native guys. That's good. No. Nope. Years ago, during when we still had youth camp um, down sort of outside of Trinidad, I took the kids and Grace had done um, trout dissection in like a class here in school. Okay. And so we get down there and that was what they were doing the day we went to youth camp. And so there's all these kids, you know, 14 to 18. And she was, she's 12 now. So we'll say she was maybe nine at the time. And um, there, you know, there's some of the kids are getting really into it and some of them are kind of sitting back. And so she sits down next to this one teenager. She's like, Oh, here, you just do this. And, you know, kind of like moves him aside. And he's like, do you know how to do this? She's like, Oh yeah, I just did this in school. And so he kind of slides the trout and the scalpel over to her and she just goes in. She's like pulling out the, here's the stomach. And here's like, she's going through all this stuff and it was great. You know, here's this, she was teeny back then. She's kind of tall now, but she was teeny back then. And, uh, the, the, the teenagers are looking at her like, whoa, she's not even grossed out or anything. So it was a fun, uh, fun youth camp experience for her, for I sure. Love it. From what little I know of Grace's personality, I'm not surprised. No, she doesn't mind getting in there. No. <laughs> she doesn't, does she? So I'm going to try to give you guys another just little kind of close up here. And you can see I'm just building the light colors around so you can see with even without that iris pupil now, pupil now. <laughs> I, don't know why I, get those I get to work on my eye anatomy shannon even without <laughs> that dissections. right more dissection <laughs> even without that uh that pupil in there you can kind of see that eye taking shape and then this is also where i want like a really true black black on that mm -hmm when I get in there, but these guys get kind of cool. They get a lot of spotting on the actual eye. Huh. Interesting. So they'll have like spots actually kind of in, which is a very native trout look. One thing I'm thinking about while we're watching you do this is like how much more it makes me think about the details. 
just because you're going piece by piece, you know, and just right. uh, that's kind of a cool way to sort of slow down and think about, you know, what are the parts and the colors that actually make up different native trout or any kind of fish, but um, it's kind of a cool experience to sort of sit here and think about it. Absolutely. And they're so cool because they're so, you, you know, they're so different. They're so individual. They're, they're so different even by watershed and, yeah. you know, cutthroat species in the West. I'm always very leery of anyone who looks at a photo and says, oh, that's a real grand cutthroat. I'm like, do you know where it was caught? Cause yeah. they can there. I mean, and let, even a biologist usually without a lot of context or some genetic information cannot tell. I mean, there's some exceptions to that, right. With like the Apache trout or some that are a little bit more unique, but yeah. by and large, there's so much overlap because there's so much individual variation that uh, it really could be one of many. Yeah. Biologists will tell you how many spots and su such should be on an adipose and things like that. Though. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. So if anybody has a question for me out there while I'm, while I'm scratching around, here, feel free to fire it over. So I'm going to shape this pupil they're usually not round. They're usually pointed in the front like a teardrop facing forward. Just a little bit, not like a human eye. Yeah, that's starting to look starting to come alive a little bit there. I'm gonna give you guys another, just kind of peek at this real quick. And you can see now with those spots and that highlight and then with the darker the pupil, pupil filled in, all of a sudden he starts to look back off the page at you a little bit, has that nice kind of wet. Yeah, you know, I really want, want to look alive as much as possible right yeah. alert alive so i might come back in there a little bit but for the most part that eye is is done corinne what do you think back there well how's that eye look i looks good eyeballish <laughs> It is amazing how it looks real, you know? I mean, when you added that, I don't know if it was black or what, but just sort of makes it go, oh wait, it is an eyeball kind of looking at me. Yeah, exactly. Just pop that contrast. And you know, sometimes I find, especially in these native cutthroats, kind of in there, obviously they don't have an eyelid, but above the eye, they get this beautiful little hit of turquoise in here around the eye. And it's such a nice complement to the rich kind of oranges and reds that we associate with the cutthroats usually. Just so is that in all cutthroats? Or specific it to you? It depends on the individual, I think. Okay. I've seen it in a lot of different species where they'll get this little bit of turquoise that comes in. Almost like eyeshadow. Exactly. <laughs> exactly right. wonder if it's um, related to temperature or light or uh, what. I wonder if there's some reason. That's a question for the biologist there. Yep. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. And I'm waiting for this barrage of questions still. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Probably not a specific species, as lame of an answer as that is. You know, we have so many in Colorado here, like recreational cutthroat stock, quote unquote. A lot of the fish that we catch, you know, we're on the front range here, right? So a lot of the fish that we catch that are relatively local, you know, are maybe predominantly greenback hypothetically, but then also mixed with some Colorado river genes, do some stocking and then dun, 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 dun. so, you know, I draw a lot of like Western native cutthroat kind of, you know, <laughs> totally, yeah. Um, you know, the former green, formerly known as greenback. <laughs> yeah. But uh, being in Colorado, like greenback is definitely one that I've drawn quite a few times. Um, and that's one that I'm really excited for, you know, hopefully within not too long, we can have a little bit more water to be actually fishing for some pure strain greenbacks in some moving water that's that's fishable and, and open to recreational fishing. And I'd love to have a few uh, photos of those guys in the water in the net and um, see what those look like. So, I'm going to give you guys just a little close-up view again. You can see I just kind of blocked in the bottom jaw a little bit here. Gave that guy a little life that, you know, like I said, this unfortunately a little bit washed out color-wise um, just with the lighting and my computer camera. So those reds and oranges are really rich, bright, and the piece is a little bit um, warmer and richer overall than then comes through on the camera. But really this guy just needs a couple of, of final, final hits, final touches around his mouth here. And then we're gonna hit the cutthroat slash in a big way. Nice. I did start to do the uh, Western Native Trout Challenge that that uh, Winty puts on. Well, I started keeping track for that. You know, historically I yep. could have a lot of them, but I started keeping track when they when they started that uh, last year, the year before. And I think I just need one more species hmm. to get my first uh, whatever. I don't know what it is, a metal or a yeah. I don't know what it is either. Or, you know, bragging rights, battle. something, right? Yeah, that's I think the main thing, really. Have you ever done the cut slam in Wyoming? I haven't. I've got a couple it's... nephews who've done that, which is pretty fun. Nice. Yeah, I've heard great things. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to give this guy, like, he's as if he's facing us just slightly mm -hmm. so we can see the back side of his mouth. And that's just going to give a really nice little kind of dimensionality to what a, otherwise is a purely fish in profile. It's kind of looking, you know, like putting the paired fins in the back gives a nice um, three dimensionality to an otherwise very profile fish. And a lot of times they do have some, some really warm tones in their mouth. So have you ever taught anyone to do this, Garrison? Like um, as sort of a, I taught a class or a school group or anything? No. no, I do, you know, I used to guide a little bit back in the day. Sure. I do love uh, the teaching aspect, but it's not something that I've found, um, I guess, the right outlet or the time for. Yeah, yeah, for sure. At, at this point. So 
So I'm just gonna pop the darks on this bottom jaw a little bit. You know, I like there to be some, some places on these pieces where if you look closely, um, you know, at the original, you really be able to see the, the pencil strokes, see the medium, see the pastel coming through. Um, I think the interplay between something that really has pieces of realism and life, but then also that speaks to the artistic medium that you use to create it and that kind of hand done, you know, since it's hand drawn, I, I want some of those strokes to be left kind of natural um, to be seen, you know. Um, you know, it has kind of become my primary medium. The reason for that really is it's been, become sort of like a signature look for me a little bit, but I love watercolor. I do quite a bit of watercolor stuff as well. Um, I'd love to do more oil stuff, but I just don't, once again, quite have the bandwidth for like a whole new <clears throat> studio station setup. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, I was listening to a fellow artist the other day and he was talking about how in art school it's like pick a style and really stick with it because you want to have like a signature style that people know, like, this is you. Right. And I've not been good at that historically for, for better or for worse. I'm all over the map. Like I love to dabble in this and dabble in that, but um, this is kind of a, a carryover technique when, when I was studying fine art in college, I did really large scale charcoal and pastel pieces, like five foot by eight foot kind of sized, um, which this is kind of a little bit of a, a crossover of that. Um, obviously a lot tighter and a lot more detail, a lot more illustrative, but um, I fell in love with that medium then and how tactile it is and the ability to get these beautiful, smooth, blended colors and then also really crisp, hard strokes around or over top or however you want. And charcoal and pastel just blend seamlessly together, you know, so kind of use them in junction. I'm going to give you guys another little peek here at this head up close and hopefully the colors will kind of come through a little bit more. So you can see I got the that bottom jaw kind of coming in a little three-dimensionality. So really this guy. Oh yes. Yeah. So you can you can see those when I get close. You can see that little Yep. And you can see also the little rib highlights. I think that's yeah. a nice um, kind of piece. If you look at fish up close, a lot of times you can see those little just hints of that rib muscle ribs mm -hmm. coming through on the belly. Um, so this guy, he's getting there. He really just needs a, a very strong cutthroat slash. You guys know that color. It's like, it's not red and it's not orange and it's so vibrant. So I really find that I need to mix red and really bright orange to get close to that, um, the vibrancy of that cutthroat slash color. You said you weren't very um, necessarily very good at sticking to one medium. Do you think that's actually been like a good thing in the design of all the different styles of hats that you do and different? Oh yeah, you know? I think it's good from that perspective. I don't <laughs> think it's good from like the perspective of like Garrison Doctor, the fine artist look necessarily. But mm -hmm. 
I don't care too much about that. Yeah. I love being able to play and move around with different things. Um, and I, I naturally tend to gravitate to uh, very tight realism. Um, mm -hmm. And so sometimes I love to do things that, that force me away from that a little bit. So one of those things is scale, right? Like I mentioned those really large pieces. So if I, all of a sudden I'm doing a fish or drawing another animal and it's eight feet wide, you got to loosen up a little bit, right? To make it happen. And another is doing things within a certain time parameter, right? If I'm doing like a time-lapse video or something and I need to go very fast, that will force me to kind of loosen up and keep things moving a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Let's see if they list a color on here. Permanent red deep. Okay, so that's going to be our base for this cutthroat shot. Permanent red deep, and then we're going to hit it with a little bit of permanent red light. So the deep and the light, and I think that's going to give us the light. Permanent red light to me is almost a true orange. It's a little bit, a little bit darker, I guess, but it's almost a true orange. So I think the combo of those two is going to take us home here. How many different colors do you think you tried in these different reds before you were like, yep, that's the slash color that I, I mean, like is the best. I have a few hundred pastels behind me here that you can't <laughs> I was see. Wondering. So I can sort of scratch through the boxes there if I can't find yeah. something that I want. <laughs> So I'm gonna, this is that permanent red light, that more orange, and I'm gonna fade that into that permanent red deep. And then this is like a really kind of true, like carmine red that will just hit right at the base. That's going to give us our cutthroat slash. So I don't know you guys are a little bit far away how well you can see this, but hopefully you can kind of see that nice cutthroat slash coming in on the bottom there. Um, so that's going to kind of bring it to life there, I think. Nice. So with this tone paper, you can come back with a white and I can kind of just hit some, some highlight edges. Bring them out just a little bit. Hmm. 
sometimes these guys get just a, a few spots all the way up front here. I know you guys are looking down the other angle, but add a few just little spots. Just give this guy a little character. It's fun to watch this as someone who has absolutely no ability in this realm. Um, it's great to like actually just sort of watch it come to life. You know, it's like, wow. Well, thank you. Okay, so I think that guy's pretty much there. I'm gonna give you guys another quick look here. So you can see I added in a few just spots right on the front, give him kind of a little personal character there. Nice. Um, That's so cool. And that view is just a little bit, you know, it's washed out a little, the color's a little washed out. But like I said, we'll post a photo. Uh, Shin, we'll get one up tomorrow, hopefully, right? Perfect. Yeah, that'd be great. Some natural light on it. In the yeah, morning. we'll get some natural light on it. Get some nice. So okay. the big question is, where do I put the signature? So usually I sign. Under the tail. Right in mm -hmm. here. I think I should still do that because otherwise I feel like I feel like it's gonna take away from it if I do it over the heads. I think maybe yeah. right right in here. I always find that a little bit stressful, if we're being honest. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it funny when you sign stuff like, you know, signing on, we'll say buying a house or whatever. And I just watch my signature just all of a sudden becomes like its own thing. It's uh, like, oh yeah, uh, it doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> well, you we have this com computer set up on uh, three of our coolers. So it's a little bit of a funny angle over there, if I'm being honest. <laughs> so I think that's pretty much it. If anybody has any... Uh, questions or comments on on it obviously and yeah so last chance for folks to enter their comments in if they have questions or um anything before we uh say good night to everyone and uh, then we'll look for the piece and put it up on the auction yeah. site i'll give you guys one last look here with the john hancock on it uh that's a pretty good look there of the try to keep hold it straight sorry i can't really see what i'm doing mm -hmm. so there it is Good. real grand cutthroat nice original pastel one of a kind will be Thanks. up for sale for the uh colorado tu auction yeah well garrison and corinne thank you guys so much um for doing this and taking time out of your day um we really appreciate it it looks awesome we can't wait to offer it in the auction and um yeah, so thank you guys i yeah, and think annie you, said we have watch. one be sure to jump on and look at the actual photo. The artist in me would like you to see it in better light. Yeah. Well, and once we get it framed, we'll have that up there too and everything. So. Right. <laughs> Bring awesome. it coming. That's Man, nice. we're in. Yay. We're in, yeah. <laughs> we'll be out there this weekend. Don't worry. Awesome. Good. Well, thank you so much, you guys. Um, we appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who tuned in via YouTube or the Zoom channel. Um, and check out the auction site for the gala. And uh, this will be up soon. Awesome. Really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having us. All right. Thank you. All right. Cool. Good night. Bye. Bye.